everyone, it's Kendra for Sassy and Crafty and today I'm working with the Salty But Sweet stamp. It has this adorable mermaid image, this cute little crab, a few shells and a flower along with some great sentiments. Now I'll be stamping these images on some distressed watercolor cardstock and coloring them in with these pearlescent watercolors you see here. Now I haven't used these before so this is my first time but I think the results turned out really cool. So I am going to be using the smooth side of this watercolor cardstock to stamp my images. You'll notice how it has a rough side and a smooth side. So I want to use the smooth side and I'm placing this in my misty stamping platform. And now because my stamps are new, I try to use my fingers to remove some of the stickiness from the manufacturing. And I will be cutting these stamps out later. So I'm just placing all of the different images just randomly on top here. And I'm using some Jet Black Ranger Archival ink since it stays wet a little longer because I plan on adding some clear embossing powder to emboss these images. So I've got everything lined up, adding my ink. And I like to use my microfiber cloth to apply some pressure just to make sure that I have a good even impression. Now I repeated this process until I had a solid crisp image on all of them. And then next I'll be adding some clear embossing powder on top. And because these stamps were new, that's why I had to go over this so many times. But now that I've used them with that archival ink, they're primed and I should only have to do this one or two times next time I use the stamp set. Now normally I use my anti-static powder tool to coat the surface of my cardstock before stamping the images, but I forgot to do that this time. <laughs> but luckily I didn't have very much excess powder except for one little area next to the crab's claw, and so I just brushed that away with my paintbrush. Now after letting my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds, I applied it to melt the clear powder. Now this will give me some shiny black edges, which will help to kind of keep my watercolors pulled up inside of the stamp lines. Now, like I said, I've never used these pearlescent watercolors before, but I thought they would pair perfectly with my shiny alcohol ink background, which I'll show you here in just a bit. But I'm using some watercolor brush pens. I'm starting with this flesh colored pearlescent shade to color the mermaid's skin. And I went with a slightly darker shade to try to add some shadows underneath her hairline and under her chin. For the mermaid's tail, I'm starting with a darker shade of purple, and then I'll be adding some blue toward the bottom and just kind of blending that together. And then I'll be adding some teal for the fins. My husband was being a sweetie pie and made me some lunch. But instead of telling me it was ready, he brought it to me and put it right below my camera. So that's what you see here, my baked potato. And I thought I would just freeze it for you so I could explain because I've sped this video up six times. So you would have really only noticed a brief flash of the plate. But anyway, back to my card. I'm using some red for her hair. There were a couple of different shades of red, so I decided to start with the lighter one and I colored all of her hair strands and then I'll be coming in with a darker shade here in just a minute. But there was a couple of places where I accidentally added a little bit too much water and some of that went outside of my embossed lines. So I just take and I try to wipe it off with my paint paintbrush and blend it in and that seemed to work pretty good. Now 
And so this is where I'm coming in with that slightly darker shade of red to color some of the strands in her hair just to give it some dimension. Now this is the same color I used on the crab, but I didn't use end up using the crab on this card, so I'll save him for later. Now I like using the Canva color wheel to help me choose complementary colors. So I selected the color of my background, which you'll see here shortly, and it shows that these colors match best. Now my pearlescent colors aren't gonna be this vibrant, but I tried to select the ones that were the closest to these complementary colors. And I went with the lime green color for the starfish on her head, and then I colored that spiral shell with the same flesh color that I used for her skin, and then I added light pink to the inside, and I colored the other shell and the flower with the darker pink. And it's really hard to see on camera, but when I tilt this to the side, you can see all the shine and sparkle and then I'm gonna cut these images off camera. Now for the background. Now first I wanna apologize for the glare on my glass mat from my chandelier. Alcohol inks do stain, so I wanted to make sure everything was cleared off of my work surface first. But when I'm working with alcohol inks, I like to make a bunch of backgrounds at one time. I actually made this background a few weeks ago, so that's why you see I have painted fingernails in this, this part of the video. But I knew I wanted to use it with this Salty and Sweet stamp set, so I wanted to use some blue colors to create an underwater scene. I started with a piece of alcohol ink cardstock. I spritzed it with some 90% isopropyl alcohol, and I'm using alcohol pearls in tranquil and celestial colors. Now, it had been a while since I'd used these alcohol pearls, alcohol pearls so I wanted to make sure that I shook them really good to mix up the mica powder with the pigment ink there is a shaker ball inside the bottle so if you don't hear it when you shake the bottle make sure you keep trying to loosen it and help mix it up and I've randomly applied both colors and drops and added some more alcohol blending solution to help move it around and I'm using the alcohol ink blower to push the color around and I kept repeating this process until I had my entire card panel covered. Now that my background is complete, I'm gonna stamp out the sentiment that says shallow using that same black archival ink. Next, I'm going to place my bubble circle die on the right side of the panel and run this through my die cutting machine. I'm gonna hold it in place with some low tack mint tape and this will create the shaker part of the card. And I'm using my die brush and foam set to get all of the little pieces out. I'm also using this rectangle die to give a little bit of a design and interest to the outside edges of the card panel. So now I'm cutting out a piece of clear acetate to fit behind the bubble cutout. This will make my shaker window and then I'm gluing this down using some Gina K Connect liquid glue. Now to glue the bubble piece to the front of the card, I decided to switch to my art glitter glue with the fine tip applicator just to make this a little bit easier. Now I'm cutting a piece of fun foam and I'm gonna cut this to be slightly smaller than my card panel about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna be marking with a pencil where I need to cut around that bubble piece. So I don't want this foam piece to be in the way. So I'm using my scissors and just kind of cutting a little U shape out. And for the edge of the card, in order to hold in those shaker bits, I'm using a skinny foam strip just along the edge. And it's about the same thickness. So this worked out pretty good.
for my shaker bits, I'm using the sequin mix from Doodles Paper Playground. This is called Just Keep Swimming. This is super cute. It has a wonderful mix of sequins and some little fishies and seashells and blue and teal and turquoise and clear sequins. And I, I just love this mix. I'll show you this up close here in just a second. But what I'm doing right now is just trying to pull out those thicker glass beads. They're just a little bit too thick for my foam and I didn't want to add an, another layer of foam. So I'm just making sure that my shaker bits can move around. Now here is where I messed up. I went ahead and removed the adhesive piece on that strip on the edge and I added some liquid glue, but I forgot about that adhesive strip on the edge. I thought I would be able to line up my white card base by placing it on top and scooting it around to get it where I wanted. But of course that sticky foam strip was stuck and it wasn't going anywhere. So I didn't get it centered very well, but don't worry, I was able to fix it. So you'll see how I fixed it here and was able to salvage this. At first I tried to use my Fiskars paper trimmer to cut off the white edges, but because it was so thick that didn't work. So then I tried using my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer. This worked, but I still didn't like that you could see all of that white around the edges. And I just, I cut off, I decided that wasn't going to be my card base. I just decided to take my big scissors and cut along the outside edges of that foam, which was already a quarter of an inch smaller than my panel anyway. So I just cut it as close to that foam as I could and then decided to attach it to a new card base. And I decided to go with black this time. And so I just glued the shaker panel directly on there, leaving a 1 8 of an inch black frame showing. Before attaching the watercolored images to the card, I decided to take my black Copic marker and just run it along the cut edges of each of the images to give it a finished look. And then I glued down each of the pieces directly on the panel. I put the two shells next to the sentiment and my mermaid just to the left of the shaker window. Here is an up close look of the sequin mix called Just Keep Swimming. There are several different types of tiny clay fish pieces that are mixed in here along with the sequins and the shells. And there's like a little brown fish. There's a purple with some yellow stripes. There's a little coral fish in there, some little gold fish. And I just love how they look peeking through those little bubble holes on the shaker window. I decided to use the thicker glass bubble pieces on the front of the card. So I'm using my new sparkle stick to help lift them up while I apply the glue underneath. And this finishes off the card. I really hope you like it. I just love all of the sparkle and shine on this adorable mermaid and in the background. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the pearlescent watercolor and alcohol ink techniques. And I hope that this project inspires you to create some fun underwater scenes using your sassy and crafty stamps. I will see you next time.